Hey there folks, so welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art and culture, and this is Billboard Breakdown. You know, I think I was expecting a lot more to actually happen this week than actually did. I mean, sure, it's the holiday season, and that usually means things are slower, with the exception of the finale of The Voice, but yes, we will get to that. But we also had big releases from Eminem and g Easy that had some sort of hype, and also from NERD, which with the continued single success, that could have some streaming crossover, and yet none of that really happened. Sure, Eminem got a couple new songs, but people must have been satisfied by the singles they got otherwise, because this was a slow week on the Hot 100. I mean, I I'm not complaining, mind you. Sorting out year-end lists is pretty difficult and time-consuming as it is. But still, I think I was expecting a little more here. But let's not waste any time. Our top 10, where once again, Perfect by Ed Sheeran featuring Beyonce sits confidently at number one, with the holiday slowdown firmly entrenching it. Sure, it doesn't quite rule YouTube, and while it's racing to the top spot on the radio, it's not quite there yet. But man, it's close, as it took the lead on on-demand streaming and sales, they've always been huge. Now at this point, I don't really see any play that Rockstar by Post Malone featuring 21 Savage can make, and good thing for that, it's not a good song. As YouTube, radio, and streaming margins are really quite inconsistent. I don't see it rising beyond number two, and Havana by Camilo Cabello featuring Young Thug might be even worse off. Streaming overall might seem stable, but on-demand streaming and sales are suffering, and if it didn't peak on the radio this week, it soon will. Now this leaves Gucci Gang by Little Pumps once again in an odd position, as it reclaimed its top spot on YouTube, but it's down in all other categories that matter for it, and radio is still very slow to get on board, if at all, at number four. Now, this leaves it vulnerable in a big way to No Limit by g Easy featuring ASAP Rocky and Cardi B, storming up to number five thanks to its streaming and the album release, but the radio has never stabilized, and the YouTube is surprisingly tenuous. I'm not quite sure whether it can play for the margin here and get any higher. I mean, it did overtake Thunder by Imagine Dragons down to number six, but that might have happened anyway, with radio and sales crashing hard, which was a similar case for Motorsport by Migos, Nicki Minaj and Cardi B down to number 7, where stable streaming couldn't really compensate for weak sales on the radio. And yet, even still, it kept above Too Good at Goodbyes by Sam Smith, which might have swung into a slight radio recovery at the end of the week, but was down everywhere else to number 8. Then we had a song that actually held its spot in the top 10, All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey at number 9. Now, after the holidays are gone, this is going to be gone too. But I will say, it's a little bit impressive that despite some losses across the board, it actually held its spot at number 9, even up over Bad at Love by Halsey, which fell past it to number 10, thanks to a sizable sales drop, even despite some good radio. But now, on that note, we need to get into our losers and dropouts, and there were some considerable ones in the latter category, as more of 2017 just falls away. Humble by Kendrick Lamar, There's Nothing Holding Me Back by Shawn Mendes, When It Rains It Pours by Luke Combs, Unforgettable by Thomas Rhett, Jocelyn Flores by XXXTentacion, and even Ghostface Killers by 21 Savage, Offset, Metro Boomin. And yet, we didn't really have that many losers, and I can't really say I'm upset about any of these falling back. Would Never Be the Same by Camila Cabello hitting widespread indifference, even by some of her fans down to mediocrity, off the debut to 98. And on a similar note, Dark Knight Dumbo by Trippy Red featuring Travis Scott collapsing to 94. Now, the other two losses, they don't really surprise me here either. Ready For It by Taylor Swift continues to fall apart at 59. And 1-800-273-8255 by Logic featuring Alessia Cara and Khalid started falling fast at 34. I don't predict this song lasting that much longer. But when we flip back to our returning entries and gains, things don't quite make as much sense. And let's start off with our returns. Yeah, Walk on Water by Eminem by Beyonce is back up to 87. That's no surprise. With the YouTube it's got, it's gonna surge big. And seeing Feliz Navidad by Jose Feliciano and Jingle Bell Rock by Bobby Helms back to 49 and 50 respectively. It's the holidays. They won't last. I'm not surprised they're here. And hell, even though I've heard the movie is completely crap, I'm not surprised that Home by Machine Gun Kelly, XM Bastards, and BB Rexa is back at 90. The real crime will be if it actually sticks around. No, what threw me off was the return for The Race by Tay K to 68. Until I discovered that he had hopped on a remix of 21 Savage and Young Nudie, which, okay, fine, it won't last, and thank God for that. But even then, our gains, even more so, feel all over 
over the place. Yeah, I'm not surprised that him and I by g Easy and Halsey is up to 15 thanks to the album, as is Lemon by NERD featuring Rihanna at 46. And hell, I'll definitely shout out The Natural Growth for The Weekend by SZA up to 29, and especially Marry Me by Thomas Rhett up to 63 thanks to the video. Again, I really hope the latter becomes a hit. It's a terrific song and actually seems to have some legs and groundswell. But for our last two, Plain Jane by ASAP Ferg up to 26 on Big Boost to streaming and sales, and No Smoke by Young Boy Never Broke again up to 80 on I don't know and I don't care. Look, neither song is particularly good. Let's hope the upswing does not last. And on that very promising note, our pretty small list of new arrivals. Starting off with number 92, Believe by Eminem. In me. Didn't I get everything I had to give you to make you see? I'll never forget if you turn your back on me now and walk out. I will never let you live it down. I'll Do never do it. Believe. So one thing I've noticed, if you're looking for what non-singles would typically chart off an album release week, it tends to be the first few songs in the track listing, especially if they're more accessible. Sometimes you might get the deep cut standout, but that's more rare, because quality can be interchangeable, especially if the album is 19 tracks and a fair number of them suck. Getting to those good songs might require a lot of work. Now Believe is definitely not the worst off the album, but it only got here based on where it was positioned on the record, and that's indicative of many of the problems on Revival. Choppy, staccato, triplet bars that might rhyme but barely flow together, a chorus that drowns itself off in some of the muddiest vocal production I've heard on a rap record this year, and content that might reflect Eminem fading into obsolescence unless his fans really believe in him, but that doesn't really give us much of a reason to wish that he would come back, especially if his bars are of this quality. Now that's not saying that there weren't some tight bars and some real intensity, M will always bring that, but the sloppiness of the production is extremely distracting, especially when Eminem's bars should be at the forefront of the song, and here, they often aren't. I mean, it might not be that bad, but I really can't get behind it either. Just kind of okay, at best. Number 84, I Pray by Red Marlowe. So the finale of The Voice happened recently, and apparently because Middle America still cares about a show that has done more to revitalize existing artists hosting than launch any real careers, we got three new songs to fill up our new arrivals this week. Our first is from Red Marlowe, a country artist has been dropping singles intermittently in the past couple years, and he came up fourth this year in The Voice. And for Soul Cut... I see why Blake Shelton would like this guy, but I'm not entirely convinced. I've always found this brand of faith-driven country song to kind of miss the mark for me. I'm not expecting moral complexity coming off of the voice, but this is a little bit too safe and polished, especially considering Marlowe's voice would probably sound a lot better against more rough country production, not the very polished guitar lick and organ that he gets. Still, it's passable, it's pleasant enough, I see the audience for it, but it won't be memorable, let's be honest. Number 82, Ice Tray by Quavo and Lil Yachty. Hate it, call him Joe Budden. Pussy! Cool outside in this press button. Scoop, scoop. Got that nigga mad, cause your bitch fucking. Fuck it, Ice Tray the gang. Fuck it, Ice Tray the gang. Ice Tray the gang. Ice Tray the gang. Fuck it. So let me explain this. Late this year, the label Quality Control put out a compilation project and for once actually decided to give the credits, the primary credits, to the artists on the actual song. Now, the song's only available on Quality Control's YouTube channel instead of either the channels Amigos or Lil Yachty, but AK okay, baby steps in the right direction. Still, there wasn't much that got me thrilled for this collaboration. It might just be me, but Peekaboo is proof that Amigos and Lil Yachty don't exactly bring out the best in each other. And it turns out I was mostly right with this because I was not impressed at all by Ice Tray. Let's get real. The only reason this got any significant attention is that the video spoofs Everyday Struggle and Quavo calls Joe Budden a hater and a pussy on the hook. The rest of the content, just shooting people, flexing, and brand name porn. Nothing that we haven't seen before done in a way that's remotely interesting. And sure, the glossy flutes playing off the more elegant strings is a somewhat interesting production choice. Not helped by the Bayou Numbers trap bead and Quavo rattling through most of his flows with increasingly drab delivery and a little 
Paul Yachty sounded like he would rather be anywhere else, but I'm more amused by them thinking that this was a good idea to put a track like this out. I mean, I'm not the biggest Joe Budden fan, but if Quavo and Lil Yachty think that they can remotely stand up to a member of Slaughterhouse on the mic, they're in for a world of hurt, especially with Joe Budden actually having more clout in hip-hop culture than he's arguably ever had, even as a member of Slaughterhouse back in their debut. I'm not sure where this will lead, but... I hope it gets interesting, because the song isn't. Number 69, Wish I Didn't Love You if by I Chloe Kavonsky. Don't you think I would? Wish to God I could. I wish I didn't love you. I wish I didn't love you. So I talked about Chloe Kahansky a few weeks ago, and I did like her husky vocal tone and presentation, but I can't say I'm not a little bit irked by the fact that she decided to hop on a by-the-numbers piano ballad that, yes, might show off her more unique voice, but doesn't exactly flatter her either. And that's frustrating because most of the song actually works. The writing is above average in capturing her anger at still having feelings for someone, especially when it was clear she was the one who screwed it all up. I like the choice to play in more minor keys, and with maybe a rougher tone overall, the Production, this could have clicked. But in the arrangement, Kahansky only seems to accentuate some points where her voice sounds a little forced. And maybe with some tight multi tracking or greater arranged bombast behind the song, this could have worked a little better to cover that up. But that also probably would have blown the song to something bigger, something that it probably shouldn't be. So, uh, I don't know. It's a good song, but I'm not entirely won over by this. It won her the voice, though, so congratulations. Shame I'll probably never hear from you again. That just happens. Number 67, Tennessee Rain by Addison Hagen. The first tear broke through, now it's coming down like a Tennessee rain. So this is one of those years on The Voice where the winner actually got overshadowed by the runner-up. And for the most part, I tend to be on the fence about these sort of situations. Sometimes the winner's better, sometimes the runner-up got shafted, and this year... Well, okay, here's the thing. Addison Egan actually put out a record in 2016 called New Places, and it's actually pretty damn good. The sort of ramshackle, clumsy, but mostly charming indie folk that reminds me a little bit of First Aid Kit, and that's a compliment. Of course, the voice can't have anything with that much actual texture, so we got this instead. And honestly, I kind of like it. This spare, sure, I'm not really surprised this didn't win. It's not really a showy sort of song. But with this sort of framing and her delivery, just Egan and her guitar singing a painful but potent breakup song, and while I think Kohansky had better writing, the arrangement and presentation of this is a fair bit better. I will say it's not better than anything off of New Days, but if I had any hope in Addison Egan getting mainstream crossover, which she won't get because it's the voice, this would be a good shot for it. I like this song. Pretty good. And finally, number 11, River by Eminem featuring Ed Sheeran. a cheat on my sins, need holy water, feel it washing over me, a little one. I don't want to admit to something If all it's gonna cause is pain Truth in my lies right now are falling like the rain So let the river run It genuinely bothers me that the bigger reason why this charted as highly as it did is likely because of Ed Sheeran, an artist that 15 years ago Eminem would have viciously targeted. At this point, Em, you've made so much money, you can offend pretty much whoever you want and still have a fan base. Are these the artists that you want to link your brand to? I don't understand why you're not going at these guys. And this is speaking of someone who actually likes Ed Sheeran. Thanks for putting in a halfway decent performance here too. And you know what, the production, well, kind of colorless and lacking any sort of grit, it fits the sort of downbeat, grubby song that this really is. Even it feels like a bit of a retread of tones that he already explored better on Love the Way You Lie. But the most frustrating part of the song, it's, again, Eminem himself, in a track about a love triangle gone sour in all directions that directly references abortion and really kind of overplays, at least to me. Maybe you could leave the x lax and Spider-Man jokes for later, they don't really fit. On top of that, in includes a vocal line on the bridge that sounds a lot like an interpolation of Rob Thomas's Lonely No More, which was weird and distracting until someone pointed out on Twitter who the hell this was, which somehow makes it even worse. I'm not gonna be able to not hear that. And here's the most grating part. It's not even a bad song, but it has just enough irritating or grating elements that if this sticks around or gets any airplay traction, which is very possible given its huge sales and some slow growth on the radio and streaming, plus Ed Sheeran, I can see this getting insufferable 
really fast. I mean, it's okay for now, but it could rapidly get worse. But I'm not there with that yet. So with our best and worst of the week, I don't know. Best is going to Addison Egan for Tennessee Rain, and worst the Ice Tray by Quavo and Lil Yachty. Honestly, it's hard to identify any standouts in either direction here. I can't promise any of it will really stick around, but hey, we'll see. Till then, I'm Mark. If you're watching Billboard Breakdown on Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.